Buonasera a tutti, ci avviamo alle conclusioni e ai ringraziamenti. Con me eh, c'è Marta Benavides di GCAP, cioè della Global Call to Action Against Poverty da El Salvador. È un'attivista, teologa, ecologista ed educatrice. È una delle, de delle sei salvador salvadoregne onorate dal Movimento Internazionale delle Donne nel gruppo selezionato di mille donne per il premio Nobel per la pace nel 2005 e ha ricevuto nel 2003 il premio delle Nazioni Unite per la creatività delle donne nella vita rurale. Marta è stata rieletta per un secondo mandato come co-presidente della GICAP all'Assemblea Globale del GICAP nel 2013. Le diamo la parola e poi farò le conclusioni. Grazie. Buenas tardes. Conteste. Buenas tardes. Wake up, you know, because I'm, I have a terrible, terrible accent. And I am going to speak in English, really in Spanish. Um, I didn't know that she was going to say those things. I don't like when people say all those things about me. Because I really have to talk with you. I have had the immense privilege to be here with you observing this great work that you've been doing. You have studied, you have scratched your heads, you have laughed, you have been nourished in all kinds of ways. You know, your head, your brains, your heart, your spirit, your hands have been nourished. So we are having a closure, but really, we are really just getting ready to get started. I come from a very tiny country in the Americas. I should say that the United States is not America, not even North America, because Mexico is also part of North America for us in the region. So we are going to be decolonizing the ways we see, the ways we think, and the way we say and feel at this little moment, we are decolonizing. Meaning, you know where the word decolonialization comes from? Coloni colonialism comes from what? From Columbus. In Spanish, Columbus' name is Colón. And when he came to our area, he said, in the name of the queen and the church, I take possession, and he did. You know, and then we started to think that we were nothing, that we needed to be culture, the lands were taken away from us, and still this, this is the struggle. While you're struggling here, discerning how to do this is because there is a paradigm, it's a paradigm that tells us that what's right is to be unjust, that it's right to take the lands of the peoples, to, to patent and all the stuff that Judith showed us there at the end, this is what is supposed to be right. So we got to figure out how to decolonize ourselves. And that deserves and demands very good thinking and studying. That's what you've been doing here. So in this little country that I come from, that is now called El Salvador, but the Nahuatl name of my country, El Salvador, in Nahuatl means Cuscatlan, and it means land of riches. Yet we are one of the most impoverished nations in the whole of the continent, and one of the most deteriorated, ecologically speaking. You know, after Haiti is El Salvador. So I love Haiti, and I am constantly thinking because there is only oneness here in Pachamama, here in this planet, here in the universe, everything is related. So I come from this tiny little town that's called El Salvador, and we have had wars and coup d'etats and, you know, all kinds of destructions. And right now, we know that the whole of the isthmus, isthmus is that land between what is now called North America and what is now called South America, that central part is the isthmus that is going to disappear. We know it, and it hurts. And we are going through all that right now. And 
besides all that, ecological and environmentally speaking, we have 20 people being murdered per day in a tiny country of four and a half million people, and everybody, 500 people living every day. I am p painting this picture to you because it seems like there is no hope, you know? But no. You know, there is a great writer that said, this is the worst of times, but this is the best of times. This is the great opportunity that life has given us to decide that what we want is not a dream. Another world is possible. Many other worlds are possible. It will depend on what we work, what our intentionality, how much we do it timely, and that we decide and we recognize that we are government, that we are the state. The people that we elect, they are our staff. Ban Ki-moon is my staff. So I got to make sure he does it right, and I do it. Tweet, writing, documenting, you know, we got to do it. We know. So the people that are in so-called government, we are government. They are the administration of government. And Mr. Obama said to people after they elected him, because they were saying, you're not doing this, you're not doing the other. So he said, make me do it. And then some people say, oh, look at the guy, how he said it. What he means is organize and make sure that I got to do it. And that's all over the world. We got to make sure that we are about peace, that we are about justice, that we are about equality, the care of Pachamama, the care of Madre Tierra. You know, we got to know that we belong to the planet. We belong to the universe. It's not the other way around. And that, in that humility, we have the power because we are part of that. So I hope that you realize how great it is that you are here together, but that we got to have people working for us for the things that we really need to. And it means that all that, that we studied and more, we got to do it. Bring on board the children, the young people, the older people, people with all kinds of needs. That's where it starts. The work starts with those people that even the UN understands that they have made invisible. Governments, administration of governments have been made, making people invisible. And when I was little, my mom taught me, everybody has a voice. Even the stones, Martita, have a voice. But you got to be ready to listen and be respectful. And then when we were little, we used to say amongst my sisters, oh, don't do this, don't do the other, because God is going to punish us. You know, my mom called us and she said, God doesn't punish anybody, but life will. So, you know, we cannot save the planet. Whatever, every action, every thought really is a seed. And we are going to collect what we plant. So let's plant. You know, we, let's plant with love and in a way that everybody around the world can be well. So I mean it because I hurt a lot when I see so many people dying in the Mediterranean. And when I hear that your administrations of government are making decisions on how to treat them after those countries and those people are coming because of colonial practices. And I know that that's happening in Asia and it's happening in my own area. You know, we got to really know the power that we are. I don't like the word empowerment. We are born power. And so I don't want to tell you too much. You've been here sitting and working and struggling. It is a joy. And I thank you for the opportunities that you create. And now we got to make sure that really, for example, in what is called now Latin America, we have declared the region and we are ready to die for it if necessary. And we are making everything possible not to have to die. We have declared a region of peace. But for peace to exist, there has to be justice. And for sure, we have to turn things around. We got to prioritize taking care of Mother Earth, of the planet, of Pachamama, and know that we are one with the universe and we must honor that. So I thank you. I really thank you. You know, I, you don't know how thankful I am, but we all have to go home knowing 
that that thankfulness in Spanish is gracias. It means grace. And that's how we have to live life, in grace, not in disgrace. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And que viva la vida. Que viva la paz. Que viva la justicia. Javier, después le vas a ayudar a ella. Ella te va a llamar después.